Kyle Busch is undeniably one of the most polarizing figures in sports, much less NASCAR. His fans love and support him no matter what he says or does. They point to his wins and others being jealous of his NASCAR Hall of Fame worthy success, which includes 60 cup wins and the most ever victories in both the Truck and Xfinity series. Conversely, his haters love to hate him, often ignoring his on track achievements, but instead focusing on his behavior. This season alone, Bush has provided multiple examples of the latter. The first happened just a couple of races into the season on Bush's home track in Las Vegas. The Joe Gibbs racing driver was clearly one of the dominant cars late and looked to be in line to capture his first win of the season. That all changed when a late caution came out and the Hendrick Motorsports teams outsmarted Bush's pit crew on tire strategy taking the lead off of pit road with Alex Bowman holding off his teammate Kyle Larson for the win. Bush exploded after the race, criticizing Bowman for never earning a win. Fast forward a few months to Darlington. The two-time Cup Series champion brought with him bad memories from the 2021 fall race when he got into an incident that ended his day, sped down pit road to the garage where he narrowly missed hitting track personnel and then received a hefty fine from NASCAR. This time around, after getting caught up in an incident with Brad Keselowski, Bush wasn't going to get in trouble for speeding on pit road. Instead, he parked his car in the middle of it before walking to his hauler. In each instance, his fans defended him. His critics called out his petulant conduct. There have been other flashpoints this year, like when he disagreed with the media and accused them of writing clickbait articles. This past week, Bush met with reporters before the race at Sonoma and will unquestionably go down as one of his most memorable press conferences ever. No, it didn't have any four-letter words or have him storming off as has happened in the past. What it did have was Kyle Busch going full Kyle Busch, and it all centered around his upcoming documentary, Rowdy, which is scheduled to debut later this month in Nashville. Naturally, Busch was asked his thoughts on the film. The 37-year-old, who doesn't sugarcoat anything, didn't this time, and gave an honest assessment, and it wasn't necessarily a ringing endorsement. Um, I mean, for... Anybody that's been around the sport for a while, it would nothing, nothing in there is anything new. Um, more so for the casual fan, if you will, to learn and understand a little bit about, uh, or if you're a newer NASCAR fan and only been around for, I guess, the last five or eight years, you don't necessarily know the whole history of where I came from and what all went down in the early days. So, um, yeah, just kind of giving a, a whole lineup of that. Um, feel like, you know, the film's okay. <laughs> Uh, there's definitely some elements that got left out that uh, just timing just wasn't wasn't enough time to show that. So I uh, wish we had an opportunity to do something more of, um, you know, the, the Jordan feature that was, what, eight, nine hours worth of film that was that was put out. So um, but it is what it is. And um, looking forward to people to understand a little bit more about um, uh, the rowdy background. An OK film isn't exactly what promoters want to hear. But to the driver's fans, it doesn't come as a surprise. That answer is who Kyle Busch is. He then answered a few questions specific to the race at Sonoma before another reporter returned to the upcoming documentary and caught the driver by surprise when he asked him what he hoped fans would understand about his career after watching the movie. Uh, That's a good question. I don't know. Um... Honestly, nobody's asked me that. So um, I, I guess I don't know. I feel like anything running through my mind, I'm trying to interpret it as people would understand me talking about it, and all it comes across is whining. So I'm going to have to think on that one first. It was clearly a moment of reflection for the driver that proved quite telling when, in his own words, he flat out admitted how even he can see people thinking of him as a whiner. The session then took an interesting turn when the reporter followed up by characterizing how the driver has been misunderstood or misinterpreted 
throughout much of his career and asked Bush if he agreed with that sentiment. Would that be fair? Yes, that would be very fair. Um, I feel as though there's been a lot of instances and scenarios where um, there's buildup to certain actions, and I don't feel as though that that buildup has ever been characterized, you know, to, to get me to that point, to get the, the pot to finally boil over. Um, and, and so to showcase a little bit of that, and that's one of the other points of the movie that was not fully um, given in there was, was some other boil over points. Um, so anyways, that's just kind of a part of it. But uh, Interestingly, Bush criticized the movie a second time for not including everything he wanted. Based on what he had said earlier, the only way he's not misunderstood is if his story gets treatment like the 10-part Michael Jordan docuseries, The Last Dance. That wasn't ever going to happen. Throughout his career, Bush's opinions have rubbed plenty of folks the wrong way. However, during that interview with reporters, it's hard not to see why his fans adore him so much. His brutal honesty knows no bounds, even if it means offering a less than flattering review of a film about his life and career. The promoter would understandably have a different point of view. But in the end, Bush will be the film's biggest promoter, or in this case, its biggest critic.